Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you on the Bright Side. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about or the longevity products or business or our true skin health products, ingredient questions, something you may have heard about or read about or a health challenge that you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. We love hearing from you. If you have a success story you want to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. That's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products by calling 866-735-2470. If you prefer speaking to a real live human, 866-735-2470. And if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, we'd love to have you on the team. You can earn some money. You can earn thank you checks associated with changing lives and helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can earn supplement your income or you can make a full-time income. You can make $100 a month or $10,000 a month or $100,000 a month. There are people making those kinds of uh, making that much money. I know several people making $100,000 a month just talking about young Jeffy products and having meetings and really changing lives at the most basic and fundamental level there is, which is the level of good health. Call 866-735-2470. If you are interested or click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to the bright side. Last program we were uh, la- we left off talking about conditioners, hair conditioners. We're talking about medium chain triglycerides. MCTs have some very interesting hair properties. On our last show, we were talking about how the hair shaft, which is maybe as thin as a, a couple, maybe maybe about as thin as a piece of notebook paper, something like that. Uh, is coated with cells like uh, scales on a fish. They're kind of overlapping cells, and they form what is called the cuticle. And this cuticle is 10,000 times thinner than the hair itself. So if a hair shaft is maybe, a strand of hair is maybe as thin as a piece of notebook paper, the cuticle that covers it is 10,000 times thinner than a piece of notebook paper. And this cuticle is what it's all about when it comes to healthy hair. When we see somebody's hair is healthy and shiny and glossy and and full, we're really looking at the net effect of the many, many thousands of hair shafts covered with cuticles. When hair is dull, when hair is limp, when hair doesn't look as good, it's largely the effect, uh, the net effect of broken, damaged cuticles. uh, The cuticles collectively uh, make the hair look on the the hair on the head look unhealthy, frizzy, limp, dead. Well, hair is dead anyway, but just looks lifeless. Microscopically speaking, the chemical bonds that hold the, the hair cuticle break down, they wear away, and this is largely the result of nutritional deficiencies, especially in copper and zinc, uh, I'm sorry, in, in the sulfur and zinc. Copper plays a role in the pigment, 
Copper probably actually does play a role in the strength of the, of the cuticle and the hair shaft. All the minerals do. Essential fatty acids play a serious role. Protein plays a serious role. And that is not just protein taking in, but also protein absorption, protein digestion. So digestive enzymes can be important. Lack of enzymes, lack of stomach acidity, digestive health issues can cause hair to become uh, uh, less attractive looking. And by the way, hair loss is not the same as hair damage. Hair loss is a problem with the a scalp and also hormones that are in the scalp. It's not a hair problem. So hair loss is not really a hair problem. Uh, and loss of pigmentation in the hair is not a hair problem. By the time the hair comes out of the head, it's dead. It's like your fingernails. It's, it's dead tissue. It's an appendage and it's functional, but it's not living. And there's really not much you could do. The scalp is really where you want to approach uh, the health of the hair if you truly want to change the health of the hair. We can change the appearance and make the hair look like it's healthy artificially, and that's what shampooing and conditioning is about. Mostly that's what conditioning is about. Conditioning, when you use a hair conditioner, you're basically coating that hair shaft. You're flattening out those disengaged cuticles, and that artificially restores the original healthy look of the hair. Theoretically, uh, but not practically. Theoretically, because too much conditioner can actually add weight to the hair shaft and uh, can cause more dullness and a more, a more lifeless appearance to the hair. So while the theory, in theory, and also the first few times you use your conditioner, you may notice some benefits, but over the course of time, as you're using more and more conditioner, you'll notice that your hair doesn't look as good. That's called conditioner buildup. You can actually use short chain fatty acids, specifically acetic acid in uh, apple cider vinegar to dissolve that conditioner buildup. The two main ingredients that are used for conditioning hair are fats and silicone. Those are the two main ingredients, but not just any fats and not just any silicone. These fats and these, the fats and the silicone molecules are uh, synthetically hooked up to what we call quats. So you get the fat and you've got the silicone and they're magnetically attracted, or they're in the factory, they're attached to these quat compounds. Technically, they're called quaternary ammonium compounds. We just call them quats in the business, and these quats are all derivatives, derivatives of ammonia. Quaternary ammonium compounds, that's the full name. They all come from ammonia, and these quats are all positively charged. Ammonia is super duper positively charged, and quaternary ammonium compounds are likewise positively charged. You can always tell, by the way, that you're dealing with an aquat, aquat or a quaternary compound, a, a quaternary ammonium compound, by the uh, suffix monium, M-O-N-I-U-M. Go look at your conditioner, and you're guaranteed to see a, a, a ammonium compound, maybe behen trimonium or hydroxypropyl trimonium. These moniums, or the quats, are attached to the fats, or sometimes they're attached to silicon, and that's your hair conditioner right there. Hair conditioner is one of the simplest things you can make. You basically uh, get this waxy material. You can make your own, if you really want to use a conditioner, you can make your own conditioner at home, very, very simply. You just buy some of this behen trimonium or polyquatrimonium or, um, or uh, hydroxypropyl quatrimonium compound off the internet, melt it down, put it in with some water, hot water, stir it up, and you got a conditioner. You could throw in a little oil in there too if you want, and you got a conditioner. Super easy stuff to make. And they're ridiculously overpriced, by the way, as all shampoos. Shampoo, skincare is overpriced. Uh, cosmetics are overpriced, guaranteed. They're really overpriced for what you're getting. That's why I got in the skincare business. I was sick of having to, people having to buy water, basically, for hundreds of dollars a gallon, what, what amounts to hundreds of, uh, hundreds of dollars a gallon. That's what most skincare products are. Shampoos are even worse. And conditioners are even worse than that. A conditioner is the most overpriced co uh, cosmetic, I guess you call it, cosmetic in, in, uh, product you could ever use as a conditioner. And you're not really doing anything for the health of the hair anyway. That's the most important thing, is you're not affecting the health of the hair. So conditioners have several mechanisms of action. They're not going to affect the health of the hair. Uh, and we don't really even know about the health of the, the, the problems associated with these quat compounds. They may not be good for us just on their own, according to the... Well, I'll tell you about this when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. Okay, we 
are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, also criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com, or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. Okay, we're talking about uh, conditioners here. A little bit, uh, I want to talk about MCTs because MCTs and coconut oil in general make very interesting hair conditioners. Uh, they're great cosmetic products, Cosmetic uh, coconut oil is. But just finishing up here with the quats, so-called quats, quaternary ammonium compounds. They've got they're the they're the most hard they're the hardest to pronounce ingredients on any shampoo conditioner bottle for sure. Babusu amido propalconium chloride, benzalconium chloride, steralconium chloride, guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride, behen trimonium chloride, behen trimonium methyl sulfate. All of these are quats. And uh, some of these are used in conditioners. Some of these are preservatives, too. Quats have a preserving quality. Remember, they're ammonia. And this um, they come from ammonia. They're derivatives of ammonia, quaternary ammonium compounds. And like ammonia kills things, quats kill things, too. Now, the quats they use in conditioners don't necessarily kill things, although there may be some health issues associated with these uh, quats, according to the Association of Occupational and Environmental, Clinic, uh, Occupational and Environmental Clinics, Quats are classified as asthmogens, which means they can trigger asthma attacks and uh, can actually cause asthma in people who don't even have it. That's a sign of an immune reaction, asthma. So it could very well be, and it makes perfect sense from a chemistry standpoint, that these quats can trigger the Im immune system. I'm not saying yay or nay, but it certainly makes biochemical sense that they would. And remember, you're not doing anything for the health of the hair. You're just kind of changing it cosmetically from an appearance standpoint. Quats have two effects on the hair. Number one, because opposite charges attract, the hair shaft, which is negatively charged, it's got negative proteins in it, keratin specifically, the hair shaft is negatively charged and the quat is positively charged and you get this magnetic attraction. The quat sticks to the, to, to the cuticle, coats the cuticle. That's how it patches up the cuticle. I mean, these quats, the way the quats are made, the quat itself is always going to be attached to a fat or a silicone. So the quat is like the magnet. It sticks to the hair, and then it deposits silicone or deposits fat. The quat isn't really doing anything itself except acting like a magnet, but it, it's always going to be attached to a silicone or fat. The silicone or fat then coats the hair, makes your hair look. Remember, look. Not, it's not, it doesn't make your hair healthy. It makes it look like it's healthy. That's how our cosmetics world works. That's why I came up with my true treatments. I was like, why are we just making the skin look healthy? Why don't we make the skin really healthy? And that's why our truth treatments have, are loaded with vitamin C and vitamin A and cholesterol and there's no preservatives and there's nothing toxic in there because we're changing the health of the skin. Likewise, why don't we change the health of the hair? Why do we got to fake everything out? Why do we have a world of fakeness? Because we don't really think of how we can treat our hair from a health standpoint. If you have a, a pet dog and the dog has a really, really dull, dull coat, just looks unhealthy. The coat is really limp and dull. Start giving your uh, dog eggs and give your dog essential fatty acid rich oils. Vegetable oils that have essential fatty acids in them. Not, not fake vegetable oils, but uh, nutritional vegetable, nutritional essential fatty acid rich oils. And watch what happens to your dog's coat. It's going to get shiny and it's not going to take very long, probably. Maybe it, uh, it, within a month to two months, you're going to notice that your dog's hair, your dog's coat is significantly more shiny. Well, guess what? The same thing will happen with us when we start eating eggs and we start eating more butter and we start eating, make sure we're using our ultimate EFAs and getting good essential fatty acids. Why do we have to fake everybody out? Let's make the hair really healthy. So if number one, the quats coat the hair, the quats act like a magnet, and then the fat that they're attached to coats the hair shaft, the coats the cuticle. And then number two, because these quats have positive charges, now all the hair shafts have a positive charge and, and like charges repel, you get a volumizing effect. So conditioners have a shining effect and a volumizing effect because of the, mag uh, the quats and the fats and the magne magnetic uh, ions that are deposited on the hair shaft. 
All of this is really interesting chemistry, and I have to say, it's, I find it quite fascinating, but it's not going to do anything for your hair, and even worse, the quats, which are preservatives, are probably not very good for you, uh, or not very good for you anyway. There's also, by the way, quats that you'll see in skincare products, and you'll also see them sometimes in shampoo products, uh, particularly things that go by the name polyquaternium. You may have seen polyquaternium 15 or polyquaternium 87, or sometimes they'll just say quaternium 15. If you see that Q-U-A-T, you're dealing with a magnetically charged particle. The polyquaternions and the quaternions are said to be skin conditioners. You'll see them in skincare products. And the way they work is that with that positive charge. That positive charge creates a feel on the skin. And when you rub, this is kind of interesting how this works. With you, when you have a, a quaternium compound on, deposited on your skin, that quaternium is a positive charge, right? And then you rub your hand along that positive charge, say you put it on your arm or something, and then you rub your hand along the arm, the negative charges in your hand react with the positive charges in, on the quat, and you feel like something's happening. You feel a little slip. You feel a little uh, a texture. That's, that's why they call it a skin conditioner. It's, a react, it's an electronic reaction between the positive charge in the quad and the negative charge on your hand that's rubbing it. You're not done absolutely nothing to change the health of the skin. Or in the case of uh, the quads, you've got, actually you've done nothing to change the look of the skin. You've only changed the feel of the skin, and that feel is a function of positive charges and, electri and negative charges. It has nothing to do with the health of the skin, period. And that's these skin conditioners, and that's just the world of cosmetics and the world of skincare. I hope that's not too confusing. Basically, you're talking about electronics. Now, MCTs, on the other hand, they can actually plump up your hair fibers. They can actually plump up the skin. MCTs and uh, MCTs are going to be found uh, in coconut oil, and this is what makes coconut oil such a wonderful uh, skin care product, also hair conditioner. It's not going to have any necessarily health benefits, but from a mechanical standpoint, the fats in the coconut oil can actually be incorporated into the skin. The MCTs are very transdermal. They penetrate very, very effectively. Straight coconut, if you really want to just, if you're not interested in changing the health of your skin and you got really uncomfortably dry skin, coconut oil is awesome. Same with your hair. You can do a coconut oil conditioner. The MCTs uh, aren't going to coat your skin or coat your hair like a conditioner does, but they'll penetrate. Now, long chain fats don't do that. And that's why if you try to put vegetable oil on your hair, you're not going to get the same effect. If you try to put vegetable oil on your hair, like a straight vegetable oil that's got a lot of long chains, you're just going to end up with oily hair. You're not going to have a very good conditioning. You're not going to have much conditioning. You may get some shine, shine out of it, but you're not going to get really any conditioning like you would with MCTs because the MCTs penetrate. Most of the dietary fats that we, uh, that we ingest in this country and around the world, I suppose, are these long-chain fats. However, ironically, even though we're all eating these long-chain fats, there are two long-chain fats that nobody gets enough of. They're called ALA and LA, and they're super duper important. In fact, they're so important, they are said to be essential, essential fatty acids. And we will be spending some time talking about these essential fatty acids here in the uh, coming episodes of The Bright Side. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back with your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you uh, have a conditioner recipe that, you, uh, that you've been using, if you don't use regular conditioners, I know some of you guys are into the DIY thing, do it yourself, share with us. Give us a call, 844-236-6010. I'd like to hear if you got anything, or even shampoo for that matter, if you got any interesting ways that you take care of your hair. Um, some people like uh, aloe vera, some people like apple cider vinegar, coconut oil. There's all kinds of little tricks that people have to make their hair look pretty, even though, to me, hair is an indicator of how healthy we are. And the best way to take care of your hair is make sure you're working on your digestive health, making sure you're getting enough protein and fats. Nonetheless, there are, uh, there are some interesting ways that people, interesting strategies that people have for uh, treating their hair topically. If you have something interesting, we'd love to hear from you, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. From... Uh, this is from the American Society for Investigative Pathologies annual meeting, 2018. 
their annual experimental biology meeting, growing evidence that probiotics are good for your liver. Increased awareness of the importance of the microbes that live in your gut has spurred a great deal of research on the microbiome, that's the universe of bacteria that live in the gut, and fueled a booming probiotics industry. A new study suggests probiotics can improve not only the health of our gut, but also of our liver. We've been saying this for years. There is a very important relationship between the intestine and the liver. And we have a, a, a situation today where one out of three Americans has something called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, also known as NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is basically fatty liver. They call it NASH. Uh, one out of three Americans has the kind of, al uh, the kind of uh, liver disease that you have to be an alcoholic to get 30 years ago or 40 years ago. Our livers are jacked up. Now, a lot of that has to do with pollution and crap in the water and crap in our food and drugs that we take, drugs that we take intentionally and drugs that we take unintentionally. But a lot of it also has to do with the intestine. And if you have been diagnosed with fatty liver and many people, um, it's almost normal. In fact, doctors will say it's normal. If you go in for a checkup and, and, and a liver exam and uh, all, they do all the liver, the standard liver panel, they'll say, oh, well, you got fatty liver. That's just normal. You're 50 years old. You should have fatty liver. No, you should not have a fatty liver. That means that the liver's overworked. That means the liver's starting to get damaged and it's not a good thing at all. Now the liver is very forgiving and, and it can regenerate itself and it can do, uh, it can, it can deal with a lot of literal crap. But why? Why would you burden your liver? Now, I know we live in 21st century America, and it's tough not to burden the liver, just the way we live our lives. But one simple little thing you could do to take care of your liver is get on the nightly essence. Make sure you've got enough probiotics. Make sure you're working on intestinal health. Make sure you're grinding up flax seeds every day and doing flaxseed fiber or doing chia pudding or doing any kind of fiber. Vegetable juices. Vegetable juices do triple, vegetable juices do double duty for helping with the uh, intestine and they do triple duty if you do fermented vegetables. Vegetable juices will provide the, uh, the microbiome, the good bacteria with nitrogen. Actually, all vegetables will, but it's concentrated in vegetable juices, and bacteria need that nitrogen. And then also, just like bacteria in the soil need nitrogen, then uh, also vegetables provide the, the intestine with fiber. Make no mistake about it. Fiber is a critical, absolutely vital player in the health of the microbiome. We all know that fiber helps keep us regular, helps clean us out, but fiber acts as food for the microbiome. And it's even better than that. Not only do you support the microbiome, but the microbiome are so grateful, the bacteria are so thankful for that food that they give us back a present in the form of short chain fatty acids and medium chain fatty acids. Yes, the same medium chain fatty acids that we've been talking about and the uh, short chain fatty acids that we will be talking about are produced as a gift. They're given to us as a gift and produced by bacteria so thankful that we've given them fiber. Well, I'm being a little facetious, but they eat the fiber, they release the, the short chain fatty acids. It's basically like a gift. So making sure you're eating a fiber, making sure you get probiotics, making sure you're focusing on intestinal health by avoiding things that damage the intestine, avoiding problem foods, i.e. gluten and uh, other plant defense chemicals, so-called lectins. Anything that messes up your liver is going to, or your intestine is ultimately going to mess up your liver. So work on intestinal health. Probiotics can be very, very important. According to this article, uh, it, uh, probiotics actually helped protect uh, mice that were given toxic doses of Tylenol, acetaminophen, which is a, uh, a, can be very toxic to the liver in high enough doses. And it turned out that uh, by using Probio uh, using probiotics, the mice had a improved antioxidant response and quote protection from oxidative damage produced by drugs such as acetaminophen, unquote. And that's according to uh, the American Society for Investigative Pathology at their experimental biology meeting. All right, we'll get your calls in just a second. I want to read one more study. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. Which workout is best for you, high intensity or low intensity? Hmm. High intensity interval training has become a big deal among workout enthusiasts who like the sh who like the short bursts of intense exercise alternated with longer periods of rest. I've been saying this for decades. That's how you exercise. You give yourself quick bursts of stress followed by long periods of rest. That how that's how the body likes to that's the way the body likes to live. 
with quick, short bursts of stress followed by long periods of rest. We do the exact opposite. We give the body long periods of low level stress followed by short periods of, of brief, of brief uh, rest. That's how most of us live our lives. That's why we're falling apart. If you want to be strong, you've got to give the body physically that, or any emotionally too for that matter, or mentally. But f speaking here from this article, if you want to be strong physically, you got to give the body quick bursts of stress followed by long periods of rest. That's how you want to work out. The good news about that is you only have to work out a few minutes a day. If you really want to give the body what it wants, if you really want to maximize growth and maximize health, it'll only take you a few minutes a day. In three minutes, you could get a great workout if you do it correctly. Three minutes. Who doesn't have three minutes? And it doesn't have to be, you know, intensity is relative. So what's intense for somebody who is, weighs 300 pounds and hasn't been, it hasn't worked out and isn't taking care of themselves or hasn't taken care of themselves, or hasn't eaten right for, for decades, that might be just getting up out of a seated position. That's plenty of workout. Walking up and down a couple of stairs can be a, a, an intense workout for some people. For other people, you may need, need to do more, but the key is the intensity. And you can tell it's intense if your body is talking to you, telling you you shouldn't be doing this. That's how you know it's intense if your body's like, you know, we don't need to do that. That's a little bit too much. If your body isn't talking to you like that, you're not doing it intense enough. So which workout is best for you, high or low intensity? Absolutely, positively, high intensity is a better workout. And keep in mind that high intensity is relative. High intensity for whatever is, in, whatever is intense for you personally. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Ontario and say good morning to Cliff. Oh, shoot. Cliff, I hit the wrong button, buddy. Call me back. I apologize. Uh, I'll get you first up here. Let's go to Tony in California. Tony, what's up, man? Yep. Cliff, call me oh, back. Hey. I apologize. Yes. Uh, hey, what's up, Tony? Talking to you on air, right? okay. You are on yeah, the air. Uh, I, I, uh, except now we got the... 80, for the first time in 83 years, I used... Uh, your coconut oil on my hair, on my head, and I. It, okay, I, I want to hear what you have to say, Tony, but we got to take a break. Sure. So stick okay. with us through the break. Okay, and I apologize again, Cliff, if you're if you're listening, give us a call back. All right, three zero three eight. I'm uh, sorry, eight four four two three six sixty ten. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. I'm pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. On the bright side, and got lines open 844-236-6010. Let's, uh, well, we're in California talking to Tony. What's up, Tony? Yeah, I put on uh, the coconut oil onto my hair three days ago for the first time in my life. I put anything on my hair for any reason, and yeah. you say it's transdermal. And all it did is paste my hair down uh, to where I looked like I had uh, one third of my hair. But, <laughs> How much but did it, you, you use? Know, it, 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 it didn't feel any better, but it felt like kind of greasy, and I washed it off with uh, apple cider vinegar uh, uh -huh. in the shower the next day. And yeah. I just, you say it's transdermal, so if I ground up some copper and put it in that, would I be getting any copper nutrition of my hair? Well, hang on. Let's let's talk about. You said a couple things. First of all, you use way too much if it if it pasted it down. So you want to use yeah. a, okay. you, use a lot less, um, and okay. then and then you got to rinse it out with the you got to rinse it out after. So you, you don't oh. you don't want to leave it in there. You got to rinse it out. <laughs> you can you can do a leave on. No, you can do a leave on conditioner like overnight if you want to leave it on for a long period, or maybe even put a hair put a shower cap on top of your hair uh, and leave it on overnight. But definitely rinse it out. <laughs> definitely rinse it okay. out. Okay. And uh, after it on for three days. Yeah, that's a little bit. That's a little bit long. But rinse it out. It should have looked nice. That if you got it all out, you sh your hair should have looked nice after you got it all out. Well, so you want I you want to use. It's white. I'm trying. Well, to I mean, it should have it should have felt hair, soft. Can I tell you, all of the hair on my body turned brown in the last three years because of the copper I'm taking. I guess. But so that my, that's the most impressive thing to my son. I told you I have a son who's a scientist, doctor. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He, he started that magazine. He's a cell, he, he's the editor of Cell, or he's the he's well, one of the he's editors. The editor. of... He's the, he's the uh, guy who started it, and he's 
He's the head of all science at Baylor Medical in Houston. That's uh, awesome, Tony. I'd love to talk uh, to him sometime if he ever. If well, he ever uh, I, I, yeah. I tried to make that happen. Um, he he visited me for two days. He and, my, and and his oldest son, who's a music professor, visited me at, at over the last week uh, holiday that we had. Anyway, uh, I, I so here's the, let me I, answer your question. I want to get to some phone calls here. Let me answer your question, okay? Yeah. Copper, as far as getting into the hair, isn't going to do you any good. Hair is dead. It doesn't metabolize anything. It doesn't assimilate. It doesn't metabolize. Uh, even if you did get copper, it wouldn't do anything. What you're talking about is copper for pigment, and that has to go into the pigment-making cells, which do not live in the hair. They live in the scalp. So that's why I was saying earlier, if you really want to work on your hair, you've got to work on your scalp. That's where, the, that's where all the action in the hair is. All but the stuff we're talking about. You said we're saying the coconut oil is transdermal, so I thought we were Yeah, it's just going to plump. No, it's just going to have a plumping effect on the hair. The the transdermal properties are, and it's not really transdermal. I guess it is because the hair is kind of an extension of the skin. But the the point is it's going to penetrate into the hair shaft and create a fuller hair shaft. It's not okay. going to sit on the surface like a silicon or a quat will. Now, okay. it's, it's, it's still a matter of degree because co- coconut oil can be kind of heavy, like you say. So you're not going to get a whole bunch of penetration. But it's better than, in my opinion, it's better than using a regular conditioner. I don't really see the need for conditioners anyway if, you're, if your scalp is healthy and your, and your body's healthy. That's why I was talking I, about making sure you I get your essential fat. Shampoos. I never use shampoos or conditioners uh, for 30, 30 or 40 years. There's really no need. There's really no need for them. You know, unless you're working in the coal mine or you're you know, doing construction or you got your garbage man or something where you get a lot of dirt in your hair and smelly stuff in your hair, there's, really, there's no need for it. Water's fine, aloe vera, apple cider vinegar, and then maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks with shampoo. All right. Thanks well, for your thanks call, Tony. Bye. Take care, buddy. Bye. Bye. All right. For you guys out there, Tony is 83 years old, and he is strong like bull. It's like six foot two, probably weighs 200 slot pounds, and it's mostly muscle. Right, Tony? I know you're listening out there. All right. Eight four four two three six sixty ten. Got lines open. Good morning, Cliff in Ontario. What's up, buddy? Yeah. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm doing good. What's going on in Ontario? Uh, uh, we're just getting over a heat wave. Uh, over I heard. Six- over 50 it? people died in Quebec. They uh, died as a result of the heat wave. I yeah. heard about that. Yeah, that's terrible. And when it's hot out there, it's not just hot. It's muggy. It's brutal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, like it's fatal for a lot of people. And I'm right on the Quebec border. So, like, Are you by the was, lake? Are you by... by... No, no, no. I'm uh, like uh, by a river, but really I'm on the Quebec border. Uh, it's just Ottawa's the capital, so they, uh, I'm on the Ontario side, but... Quebec's on the other side, so the dust, like, we're, the reason people do about the dust in Quebec, it's just the way it's reported. Uh, in Ontario, we won't know till August. It's the way uh-huh. they report the dust. Yeah, yeah. Are you, bi- are you bilingual, Cliff? Uh, functional. Like, uh, I'm functional. Okay. That's my classification for French language. You know, like, English, I'm, that's my mother tongue, but French, I'm functional. Yeah. Awesome. Well, what's going on today? How can we help you? Yeah, my, my girlfriend, uh, like, um, my girlfriend's on Clausewell, right? And, and like, what happened to her is, is that, like, she got, ended up in one of these city boarding homes, which is right ne- near me. And ever since, like, the last February, like, she's going really downhill. And, mm. uh, and, and how old is and she? she? How old? Uh, she's about 50, I'd say, seven now. And is, and, she, and is it for schizophrenia? Are they using it? Yeah, exactly. And and the thing is, is that she's a really nice girl. She's got like a science degree, uh, like from McGill and stuff. And and unfortunately, she's got this thing. And and she's like, the thing is, is that like, uh, like we used to eat together before we uh, she went in there, and, and she, we ate fairly well. She looked pretty good, even though the medication she took. Uh, but now they increased the doses. And 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 unfortunately, like she's uh, she doesn't look so good. She looks like uh, shrewish, you know. Like she looks shrew. like what? Shrewish? Uh huh. Well, Clausewell Clausewell is a wicked drug. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, there, you may need, you know, I'm not saying if you don't need it, you need it. Uh, you know, psychosis is, can be a serious business and schizophrenia, certainly. Yeah. Is, is, is she di- she's diagnosed as a schizophrenic, right? Is that what yeah. you said? Okay. What, what, kind of schizo- what kind of schizophrenia, by the way? I think it's like a form of, like, paranoid schizophrenia. Like, it's hard to say because she, she has, like, developed paranoid tendencies. But there's things I don't understand. Like, she's, like, delusional. 
Uh, wow. You know, and uh, but she wasn't like she was manageable before. The thing that concerns me, you're talking about her hair, and her hair doesn't look very good anymore. It looks like really yeah. dry. It, it looks like, like falling out. Eh? It's scary. Yeah, and that's a skin, I'm, that's. Just, I'm not going to say it's directly related to the Clozeril, but the Clozeril is not helping for sure. Clo oh, any drug is going to. Oh, well, lots you could do. Bentonite clay, for sure. She should be doing okay. it every day. Probiotics every single day. Fermented foods. Work on the yeah. gut. Work on the microbiome. There's so many different things you could do here. Work on the microbiome, for sure, for sure. Okay? Yeah. Make, yeah. And that's going to help her detox. If she's not, I don't know if she's having bowel moves. Sometimes uh, uh, sometimes clauseril can cause constipation. So uh, if she's not having regular bowel movements, that can be a problem, too. So she's got to do yeah. lots of me. What's that? She's not having proper yeah. bowel movements at all like and and basically how to like uh this is a big deal it's, like, it is a big uh, deal what about uh the um and uh, getting nutrients into her yeah getting she it's extremely important not just for your girlfriend but for anybody who's on a chronic drug a long-term drug it happens yeah. to be the closet is really wicked but but you know if yeah. you're on a beta blocker or calcium channel blocker it is so important to get on a supplement program you can mitigate a lot of the potential toxicity and not even you may not even know that your body's breaking down in response to the drugs in this case you know it's obvious visibly but if you're on a drug sometimes you don't know that your body's breaking down and you're running higher risk for heart attacks and and cancer and all kinds of horrible diseases so it is so important if you're on a prescription drug that you get on a nutritional supplement program it's unspeakably important and then also same with the gut health same with the probiotics and gut health and having regular bowel movements it's pretty much everything we talk about except you got to do it with a hundred times more vigilance and you got to be a hundred times more conscientious a thousand times more conscientious than somebody who's not on prescription drugs Clozarel, as I say in particular is one of the nastier drugs so uh, you really it's so important that she gets on the beyond tangy tangerine the healthy start pack the fucoid Z, which is important for detox. I've talked about this in the past, but not a, not a lot. The ultimate enzymes are detoxification supporting. All enzymes will help you detox. Uh, uh, I shouldn't say enzymes, but well, enzymes probably too will help you detoxify. But also the uh, betaine and the bile and the, all the stuff that helps you with your digestive system can be important for detoxification too. So making sure she's on the ultimate enzymes using apple cider vinegar. I mean, it's, it's really, really important. You can mitigate a lot of potential problems, not only the short-term problems and the obvious problems, like with her hair, but long-term potential problems like heart disease and diabetes and all kinds of hor other horrible things that are associated with taking cl chlorpromazine or a clozeril long-term. Yeah, she's, she's not like fat. Like she, sometimes actually she doesn't eat a, like as much as she should, uh, but she's not fat. Uh, uh, she doesn't, she's not like a diabetic type person. Does she have like dry mouth? Does she have the dry mouth and the, uh, and the sweating and, and all? All that other stuff that you get with the uh, with the antihistamine yeah. drugs. She's not yeah. like you know before. She's not like a problem eater. You know she was never problematic with her food. She's a very careful with what she ate. Like this is what she studied in school. Uh, like uh, nutrition. You know, I'd, yeah. love, I'd love to talk to you more. He sounds very fascinating yeah. here, but I'm out of time, Chris. Uh, Cliff, I, I apologize. Yeah, no yeah, call back again. I'd love to talk to you some more. Thanks so much, Cliff. All right, thank you for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, and all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.